three, two, one. Hit it. Hit what? I don't know. I just thought I'd surprise you. It's a rock and roll thing? Sure. Dev and Mike. She's Dev. I'm Mike. Music for busy people. Welcome, everybody. If you haven't been here before, especially welcome to you. Isn't she cute? She's a cutie. Today we're doing rock and roll, the second song in Led Zeppelin 4. If you haven't joined us before, we're doing a Zeppathon. And we're doing one album at a time. So right now we're just towards the beginning of Led Zeppelin 4. Got here just in time. What do I have to say about rock and roll? Well, Don't open in that general, can of worms. Taking time out of a busy day to listen to a little bit of Led Zeppelin. Connect with you, our friends. Especially those of you who are patrons. We love you. We really, really appreciate you. We want to create a lot of fun stuff in our patron village. I'm calling it that from now on. It's a patron village. Not a tribe, because that's too trendy. Patron village. Well, since you mentioned it, check the link in the description if you'd like to visit our Patreon and help support village. us that way. You get extra videos and other perks for different levels, so please check it out if you can. And please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, because we need subscribers. Do the bell thing. I'll notify you for the next premiere. Don't miss the premieres. And as always, the commenters and giving us likes, those help as well. So we really appreciate all that, and we're really enjoying it. We love doing this with you. Now rock and roll. Now... For a little rock and roll. Mm -hmm. I need a martini when I say that. What is when was rock and roll officially born? Fifties. Okay, I would I, say I'm, I'm right in saying Elvis, that. Little Richard, Jerry Lee Lewis. I could when be. When people still dressed up. This song is a tribute to that era. This came out of a jam session. This one was recorded at Headley Grange, I believe. It was a country house where they recorded this album, and they're using the Rolling Stones mobile studio. I want to know how big the truck is, I guess I'm saying. I don't know. Right? Because the things that, that you could shove into a truck, you just moved. It's on my mind. Next. Don't you love the way her mind works? I do. Yeah. <laughs> and she has, this, she, has, right now, she, has this, she has this very unique talent of making me forget everything. I'm sorry. Thinking. No, it's because you're so, I, I'm really interested notes. in what you're doing. And I, and then it confuses me sometimes. And then I'm stand lost. Up, I'm improv. Ian Stewart from the Rolling Stones plays on this song. I believe plays piano on this song. One of the rare occasions where you hear a guest musician. From the Rolling Stones. It's okay. Ian Stewart. He wasn't a regular Rolling okay. Stone, but he played on a lot of Rolling Stones recordings, played piano, but he okay. wasn't one of the five Rolling Stones. It's cool that this song came out of a spontaneous jam session. That's for real. It starts out at least very Chuck Berry-like. And before we listen to rock and roll, I just want to play a very brief snippet of the very beginning of a Little Richard song called Keep It Knockin'. And the reason why I want to do that is because the opening drum lick is sort lick. of similar to what John Bonham chose as the intro drum part to this song. So let's listen to a little bit of that. Two. Cool. So we have a new setup here. I'm working the kinks out. It's totally different than the way we had it set up at our last place. Okay. Keep a knocking by Little Richard. What a way to open. Keep a knocking, but you can't come in. Little skirt. Keep a knocking, but you can't come in. Keep a knocking, but you can't come in. Come back to my night and try again. Hmm? That's very swing. But that's the kind of rock and roll that they're giving a tribute to. Mm -hmm. And Chuck Berry played a lot of music like that, too. Now, Little Richard played the piano. Chuck Berry played the guitar. But that's the kind of music that we're honoring here with this song, I guess. Come so, on. So now let's listen to Led Zeppelin's rock and roll. Okay. Ah, I see. It's a little different. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. He's got interesting guitar sounds. I wonder how he's getting those guitar sounds. This is very Chuck Berry-like, though. Makes you want to do the twist or one of those kind of dances.
into our solo time. Like the echo effect. And this is very Chuck Berry like. There's the Ian Stewart piano. have a running argument that artists who sell their stuff for commercials and whatnot it's it's not a good thing and i'm like no of course it is it helps the future generations um hear the bands and reinvigorate the music which is true but if you only hear this you never heard any other led zeppelin you don't know who they are and you've seen this commercial that played what was this cadillac but now when listening to it i'm only seeing the cadillac commercial yeah, that's the one thing, that's unfortunately. A bummer. This is the first time they ever licensed a song for commercial use. So that was a little disappointing. I don't blame them. And if you're no, going to do it, do it for yeah. a nice car. Sure. And it was a cool campaign, and I think it was very successful. But, yeah, now you're associating it with a commercial, and I don't want to do that. Oh, when did they sell it? Was it later on? After the Cadillac? After it was they... 2001. I mean, well, the song was recorded in 1971. Yeah. So it was 30 years later. I mean... Yeah. So it does give a new generation yeah. a chance to yeah. hear the song that they may not hear because it doesn't exactly get tons of radio play anymore. Right. And unless a whole bunch of DJs out there are splicing these songs into their uh, house music, which they should be, I would go to that. But chances are they're not. I really like the guitar work on this song. It had a mix of classic, you know, 50s rock kind of rockabilly, whatever you want to call it. But yet there was a more of a page like portion of the solo. So I thought that was cool. The sound of the guitar was very interesting. I don't know how he got that sound, if he plugged it right into the recording deck, or I don't know how he did it. I'm sure you commenters who are experts will tell me. And Tell him. The drums were good. I mean, fun, loud, a lot of cymbals, mm -hmm. and the flare at the end, that was all awesome. Poodle's Makes gross. you want to dance, and yeah, it, totally it just dance. felt like a live dancing kind of feel to it. Extravaganza, if there was ever a I word to use. Poor John Paul Jones. He didn't even play the piano. Ian Stewart played the piano. So his bass part wasn't that... But it was the appropriate bass mm -hmm. part for that song. He played the appropriate kind of bass line for that, but it wasn't really highlighting his skills. He's not an egocentric person. He does what he needs to do. He's like the... It's necessary to have the He's the utility players. man. I get it. He is the utility man. He just does what you need. You need mandolin? I'm there. You need keyboard? I'm there. You need bass? I'm there. You That's know. good to be that versatile. Yeah, he's very versatile. I Change think this on. was usually either an opening song for the concert or, mm. or an encore song for the concert. Mm. It's that kind of song. It starts out like, duh, 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 you know, so everybody starts screaming as soon as they hear that. Mm -hmm. Hold on. So Black Dog and then this one. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Totally different songs. 
totally different songs, but both very rocking and very yeah. loud. An uh -huh. exciting opening to the album. So what I want to do for the remainder of the video, I like to play cover songs of some of these songs. I usually pick cover songs that I find are interesting, like different takes on it, not just somebody trying to imitate Led Zeppelin. However, for this particular song, I chose a different route because there were lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of covers of this song. And most of them are just straight out covers. They're not that unique. There was a, one or two unique ones, but instead I decided a lot of famous rock musicians have done this song. So I thought we would just listen to a little bit of each person. We have Van Halen, Roger Daltrey, and Jerry Lee Lewis, and the Foo Fighters. They all did covers of this song. So the first one is Van Halen from 2004. I believe this comes from a concert film that they did. I forget what it's called. I believe this was the final song of the encore. Big hair, baby. Big hair. Rest in peace, Eddie Van Halen. We miss you. Which one is he? He's the guitar player. Okay. This is Sammy Hagar Van Halen. It's not David Lee Roth Van Halen. I prefer the David Lee Roth Van Halen, but they're still good. This is from 2004. We're not going to necessarily listen to the whole song, but I just want to hear Sammy Hagar a little bit and maybe hear part of his solo. So, as we jam out this last tune, just remember... That's Sammy Hagar right there. That's Sammy Hagar? Yeah. So who He's the singer. Away? Sorry, I don't know. The guitar player, Eddie Van Halen. They both have guitars. The guy on the right. I mean, he can sing high notes, Sammy Hagar. So I'll give him that. And this video doesn't seem synced, but whatever. Those pants were really comfortable. Yeah. They kind of look like 80s pants, though, and this is 2004. Yeah. Roomy. But that's their look. I'm going to skip to the guitar solo. Look at that drum that's set. That drum set, man. Whoa. Whoa. He's happy. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see people who are happy. He's a good drummer, too. So, he they, could rip it. They're a great band. This is Roger Daltrey from The Who. It's a solo recording, though. It's not with The Who. So I'm curious. Let's see how this sounds. Yeah, the well, they're just doing a straight cover. I mostly want to hear the singing on this one. He's, he's not going way up there. So a couple of notes he's hitting it, but he's keeping it lower, which is probably wise. I love his voice. He has a very meaty, I don't know how to describe it. He's a great mm. voice. It's great sounding, very unique. It's too bad as he got older, he, I've heard a couple of concerts of his where it's very strained. Just he must have done some damage. But anyway, it was good. That was respectable. Now the last two I have, Jerry Lee Lewis and Foo Fighters, Jimmy Page actually plays on these. 
2006, Jerry Lee Lewis. I don't know how old Jerry Lee Lewis was in 2006. I'm going to say, do some quick math here. Probably in his 70s. All right. So that's going to be interesting. And Jimmy plays, is a guest musician on this song, playing guitar, obviously. So let's check that out. Jerry Lee Lewis plays, plays the piano. And if you don't know who Jerry Lee Lewis is, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. That's Jerry Lee Lewis. How oh, good. You know that song, right? I assume. From Top Gun. From Top Gun. Okay, I didn't even remember it was in Top Gun. This is Rock and Roll, Jerry Lee Lewis, 2006, with guest guitarist Jimmy Page. Okay. Boy, oh, I did rock and roll. Well, he turned it into more of a boogie woogie kind of thing. Well, been a long time as a rock and roll. Been a long time as a digital scroll. Let me get you back. Let me get you back. Let me get you back. It's de definitely a very Jerry Lee Lewis take on it. I like that he can pitch his voice. That sounds like him. And there's Jerry Lee... That piano That's banging. That's impressive if you can play the piano still in your 70s, like you're jamming it. Right. You're just dancing on the keys. Respect. That's the way he played the piano. Like, he banged yeah. it. Yeah. He played yeah, it with yeah, his yeah. foot. You, could, you know, he'd play it with his... Uh, he did. He used to put his foot on the piano. And here's like, my elbow. Yeah. Here's other appendages. That was fun. I mean, and the fact that he could still play the piano and sing like that into his 70s, good for him. At least, I don't know. Again, he could be old. Now. Lives forever. I, the last one is by Foo Fighters. Okay. So this is interesting. It was from 2008. It's from their concert. I don't know which concert, but where they were exactly. But Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones are both playing with them. So that's why I thought it would be interesting to watch this. So we may watch we this one all the way videos. through. We love videos. We love videos. Okay. Now we do. Yeah. I know I do. Now they understand the magic. That setup is that's a, that's an interesting stage. He's facing the drummer. I wonder if that's just to get it the rhythm going, and then yeah, I'm okay with that. See, Jonesy doesn't have that much to do, but he's holding it. So they're like in their early 60s here. He's still shredding it at that age. Grizzly. Right, let's hear this solo. Got some gristle to that. See, he still looks like him. Oh. Still shredding it in his 60s. Give it the tears of a life and 
Okay, they all look packed in there like sardines, though. That would bother me. They're tight, man. But don't they look so squished in there? Nobody's dancing. Love you some Dave Grohl. There's a little bass flare at the end. I'm glad. <laughs> One lonesome crowd server. <laughs> That's the only one they showed. That's true. <laughs> just in that last little bit. <laughs> okay. Well, that's it, Preaching. except for one little, very brief, goofy little surprise of mine. No. I don't want you to see the title of this, so you just keep your eyes closed. Put your headphones on, but keep your eyes closed so you don't see the title. I just want you to be surprised. This is from 2008. So what? Listen, don't watch? Just listen, don't okay. watch. Okay. Once it starts, you can open your eyes. Oh. I just don't want you to see the title of it when I put <laughs> I it up. Know. Another, another cover. Actually, keep your eyes closed until he sings. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, Can you believe this? Of course it is. No. I mean... Look. Okay, look. Wait, wait. Let's just see this part. back in my day were cool. <laughs> <laughs> It's so bizarre. If you had a sock puppet What's weirder, playing the instruments, then I would get a tickle out of that. What but was weirder, that or the song. gong show? Remember we saw the immigrant song no, on the, the gong, gong show? Was weird. Okay. The chipmunks, that's that's my era-ish. I like the chipmunks. But that, I liked them that is, in their original form. Yeah, that's a little... That sounds they're overstepping so their, overproduced. Yeah, right. Very, very overproduced. Right. Like back in the day when they were just like, they just tweaked the vocals and stuff. Right. That was fun. Everybody's anyway, a critic. Just when I stumbled across that, I had to just <laughs> yeah, throw it in see there. a reaction to that. <sighs> this is the thank new Thank you for era. bearing with me, everyone. I <laughs> appreciate it. And thank you for joining us for another lovely Led Zeppelin reaction. Of two of the greats. Next song is Battle of Evermore, which you probably have never heard. Right now we're signing off. So thanks again. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Lonely time Well, it's been a long time Maybe if I had some of your dad gone good Louisiana loving You remember me, don't you?